Hey everyone, welcome back to Time Value Videos. Uh, this video is going to cover updating our previous video, the one where we did the intro to technical analysis, where we did a simple moving average crossover. Uh, we did the 50 day and the 200 day. Um, and if we look on our chart, this is kind of what we got. Uh, but then we got an indicator on the side that told us when to buy and sell. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to update it so that it doesn't have to be a 50 and a 200. It can be a 10 and a 100 or a, I don't know, 200 and a 500 or however much you want. Um, and it also doesn't have to be a daily simple moving average. We already have the code written in from our last video on how to do weekly or monthly moving averages. Uh, but right now this sheet is not really optimized to do anything outside of daily. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to make it so it doesn't matter how much data you want, whether it's a lot or a little, or how far back in history you want to go. Uh, we're going to make it way better. So I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start by doing the easiest way I know how to do it is to record a macro. Hit OK. And I'm going to go. The first thing we want is we want this these three columns I, J, and K to be part of our macro. And right now they're not. Uh, so I'm going to do click on I. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to click inside it so that I'm editing. Uh, F2 also will edit it, but um, just click inside. And we're not going to actually change anything. We're just clicking inside so that it set, so that the macro registers that we're editing that cell. And then we're going to hit enter. And then I'm going to click back on the cell, and I'm going to drop that down all the way. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the 200. I'm going to click inside it. I'm not going to make any changes. I'm just clicking inside it and then hitting enter. And then I'm going to click back again. I'm going to drop that all the way down. I'm going to do the same for the last, not actually change it. Then I'm going to click, and then I'm going to drop the formula all the way down. Cool. So what that did is, I'm going to stop recording now. So what that did is it registered in the macro that I edited those cells and it saved that formula. So I don't have to actually go back and think about it. Um, now the formula is already in there. So it's average of the past 49, including today makes 50. So the 50 days worth of data. And the one next to it is 200 days worth of data. And then uh, the one after that is the big long if then um, where it's got multiple conditions. And so it would have taken me a while to like think of what that formula needs to be if I was going to try to write it by hand. So I, that's why I recorded the macro and just went in there and clicked on the cell and then hit enter. And so it tells the, the macro uh, VBA editor, just put in whatever the formula is. I don't want to have to think about writing it myself. So we got that out of the way. What we're going to do right now is we're going to edit this macro so that I can change the 50 day to some other time. Um, let's say a 10 day and a hundred day for an example. So let's, we want this to be a 10 and a hundred and then the buy sell will still be there. So what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to space this out a little bit. So we have range I2 select, then we have active cell formula, then I2 and then fill down all the way I2 through 53, then start at J2. So I'm going to space that one out. So we have, this is column I, then we have all of column J stuff going on. So I'm going to go over here and space that out. Um, right after the J2 through J253. So now we have all of K going on right here. So we have I, J, and K. So we're kind of, so we can see it a little better. So in column I, that's the 50 day moving average right here. We want it to be um, starting off instead of active cell because we don't know, I mean, we do know that it's going to be in cell I, uh, but we don't know that we're going to be having clicked on that before. So we don't, I, dealing with act, the, the active cell. Um, writing code in in VBA is terrible. It's like not really helpful unless you really don't know where you're going to be and so you just want to be however you are. Um, I just get rid of it completely so that we have range I2 dot formula um, and then I2 select. We don't want I2 select and we don't want selection. We just want to go straight from one to the next. I2 autofill destination and then we don't need to select the range afterwards because we're not going to do anything with it. We just don't need to click on it. So now we have range I2 add a formula and then copy it down all the way. So that's great. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to get rid of select. We're going to get rid of active cell. And so it's just to be J2 formula is this. Yep. J2, get rid of select, get rid of selection, autofill, and get rid of the select range again. So now we have take J2 formula, copy it all the way down. Great. Um, we're going to do the same thing um, here. So K2 instead of select. We're just going to go straight into it, get rid of active cell. So we have range K2, give it a formula, this really long one that hangs off the end. Um, then instead of select and instead of selection, we just want K2 autofill all the way to the bottom. And then we don't need to select anything else after that. Great. So this works awesome if you always have um, IJK and always have till range 253. 
and you always have 49 and 199, so you have a 50-day and a 200-day, but we don't always have those. We're going to want to change it so it's not always a 50-day, it's not always a 200-day, and sometimes we're going to want more or less data, so we're not always going to be ending on row 253. So we're going to have to change that. So the f first thing we'll do is we'll change that end row of 253 to be whatever row we end on. So if I go over here and I do monthly data, and I hit get data, it's really short. We only have 13 periods because it's one year of monthly data, so it's actually 12. We only have 12 dates. Uh, so we don't need all this to go on right here because that's way too long. We don't need that much. So if I go back to my macro, I want to go just as far as I have data for, which is column H. Just as much as there is in column H. We can stop after we get to the end. So I go over here and I say, uh, where's the end? Well, I'm going to make a variable called end row. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, and I'm going to say, what is end row? Well, end row is going to be the end of column H. And so how do we write the code to say the end of column H? We're going to start at cells uh, row 1, column 8. And H is column 8. So we're going to say start at cell H1, H1, um, and then go dot end XL down, which says go to the end at the bottom. I could say end XL up, and that would say go to the top, but we're already at the top, so I don't need that. Um, XL down dot row. So what we're saying is the last row is going to be whatever's in cell, you start at cell H1 and then go all the way down to the bottom and whatever row that is, that's the last row. So it's perfect. It says go here and then basically is the same as saying hold control and hit down and you jump to the bottom. That's basically the code we just wrote. So that's super helpful. Um, so now that's our end row. And so instead of 253 being our end row, we can just put end row in there. Uh, we have to put it um, with the right syntax. So we're going to do quote, and, and, quote. And then between the two ands, we're going to put our end row. And then we're going to do the same thing for right here where it's 253, quote, and, and, quote. And we're going to put end row right between those. And the last was right there, quote, and, and, quote. And we're going to put end row. So now it's going to copy all of that information down as far as it goes, wherever it is. So if I go, oops. So just to show you that it works, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to delete all of those. I'm going to leave the headings because I haven't written the code to put the heading in yet. And I'm going to say uh, get data, and so it's going to get the new data, and then we'll do uh, we'll add this part on in a minute. But if I run this macro, then it's going to fill in exactly what I'm looking for, all right there, perfect. So let's go back here and let's do um, all of this needs to happen after our after we pull the data so I'm just gonna highlight all of it and do control C to copy I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna go back to our other macro our other macro right here and I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom I'm gonna paste our new macro at the bottom so that after it does all the old macro of pulling the the price history then it'll run all that stuff we just wrote perfect so now I run it and it seems to be good um, I'm going to do daily data again just so we can see that it goes. There we go. So it went all the way to the bottom, and it shouldn't have gone farther. Yep, and it didn't go any farther than the bottom. Perfect. So we also need to change the headings here to be not always 50 and 200. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to a, the column A, and I'm going to do what moving average do we want. Right now it's at 50 and 200. So I'm going to leave those alone for right now. I'm going to leave it at 50 and 200 so that we can see. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our macro. I'm going to change 49 right here. Instead of being 49, I want it to be whatever I put in over here, 50 and 200. So right now, 49 corresponds to 50. So really, it's whatever's in cell A10 minus 1, right? So what I need to do is quote and and quote. Then between the ands, I'm going to put cells, and then it's A1, or I mean A10. So it's going to be 10 comma 1, and then minus 1 because it's 1 less than whatever that is. Then row or then for 199, which is our 200-day moving average, I'm going to do quote and and quote. In between the ands, I'm going to put cells, and this is 11 a 11, so it's going to be 11 comma one minus one, and so it's saying whatever's in there is that minus one. And then, um, oops, and then I can go back, and then I also need to put in a heading, and so my heading is actually going to be. It's not always going to be 50-day simple moving average. It's actually going to be equal to equals whatever day I have in here, it could be 50, it could be something else, and it's not always daily, it could be daily, it could be monthly, it could be weekly, and quote space SMA quote, enter. 
So 50 day simple moving average, if I change this to 100, it becomes 100 day simple moving average. If I change it to monthly, oops, if I change it to monthly, it becomes a 100 month simple moving average. So I can change it however I want and then I just hit the macro and it'll run. Uh, but before I do it, I need to make sure that this code um, is correct. So, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do record macro again, I'm hit okay. I'm gonna go edit it, I'm gonna hit enter so it records it, stop recording, go back to my macros edit those. Now I have active cell, which is actually supposed to be cells I com or I, uh, nine comma one, row one, column nine, dot formula is all of that. So I'm gonna, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy that row, hit control C, go back to my other macro, and I'm gonna add that in there. It can, you can add it wherever you want. Uh, I'm gonna add it next to the end row one. And so we have cells uh, n one comma nine, which is I one formula becomes all of these things, right? Um, which is whatever's in row nine, um, column eight before it, which is that one. Um, and then row three, uh, which is, uh, where our, our M is going to be. Um, and then eight before it. So column a, so that'd be a four ends up being uh, and, and, and simple moving average. So I'm going to do another one here where I say cells 110 is equal to formula um, row 9. And then because we moved over one row or one column, I mean, we're going to have to go back one more column. So minus 9. And then over here is also minus 9. Um, and it should be, and we're going to move down one row because we're going from the, from 10 to 11. So row 9 becomes row 10. Uh, and row three stays the same because we're still monthly. So now if I go back up to the top and I say instead of clearing uh, B through H, I can clear B through Z if I want to. It doesn't clear all of them. It doesn't matter. And now if I run it, it should fill in. So let's do weekly and a five-week versus a ten-week moving average crossover. Get data. Oh, yeah. So now it fills everything in. Let's look at our chart too. So we got some good info right here. So now we can pull anything we want. Um, we can change our, our time frame here. Let's do a 100 and a 200. So see, these are automatically updating when we do it. We can change weekly to monthly. Oops, it, because I have the MA at the bottom, it always does that when I try to type M. Hit get data. Uh, okay, so it's working there. Uh, we got it, we got it, put a title in there. We forgot that part, but that's okay over here so that's a that's a weird one that one does not generate much help but it works that's the point it works so this video is a little bit longer than I meant it to be sorry about that but um, basically we got everything in here that we wanted um, as far as getting our macro to work um, I would like to hear back from all of you who are watching if anybody has any suggestions for my next video um, I have a ton of different Excel ideas that I can be doing, but I want to make sure that this is stuff that's relevant to you. So if you like technical analysis and you want to see a different technical indicator, throw it up in the comments so that I know, um, and I'll do that one next. Um, otherwise, I can go through a bunch of different ones. Um, I got a lot of ideas, so I'll be doing them, but if I get some good comments, I'll be going on whatever you all want to see. And as a reminder, I do financial modeling for a living. So if you have an Excel project that you're working on that you need help with, you can go to my website, arborgastadvisors.com slash contact us, and you can book me for a free consultation so I can sit down with you and we can figure out how to get your problem solved. So that's it. Thanks for watching.